Have you ever seen some comments in your Bible that makes you question, hmm, should this verse actually be there? Well, I think that deception actually goes back to the ancient saying from Satan himself, did God really say? In this video, I'm going to show you uh, if those verses should actually be there or not. So stay tuned. You've probably seen uh, sentences like this verse was not found in the earliest manuscripts or other ancient authorities omit this verse which makes you question should they actually be there and I think that's highly damaging to the body of Christ so uh, yeah stay tuned there's a Bible verse here uh, that pretty much sums up the whole uh, issue in my opinion here it says in Psalm 12 the words of the Lord are pure words a silver tried in a furnace of earth purified seven times and here it says thou shalt keep them O Lord Thou shalt preserve them from this generation forever. And why is that very important? Because according to modern scholarship, um, proper Bibles only came into existence by 1881, the so-called critical text. So that leaves a huge gap from the year 300 to the year 1881, where this Bible verse is not valid where God did not keep them he didn't preserve them they were not in existence but they actually just came in 1881 that's uh, the, the Nestlé Aland uh, uh, text which is called the critical text yeah there's some other Bible verses that says scripture cannot be broken heaven and earth shall not pass heaven and earth shall pass away but my words shall not pass away so that means that no matter how much Satan tries to twist scripture or remove manuscripts or Bibles, he cannot because the word of God will not pass away. Yeah, proper Bibles only came into being in 1881, says modern scholars and Bible publishing firms going against Psalm 12. Yeah, confused yet? I'll show you the whole deal. Uh, first, okay, so you need to know that there's two manuscript authorities. One is called the critical text, which is based off of a very few select manuscripts coming out of Egypt. And then you have the traditional text, the traditional uh, text gathering or the traditional normal Bible, which has been there for 2000 years. And here's the many names of that traditional text. Um, First, I would say it, uh, you, you, it's the majority text um, is one word. It yeah, they call it the majority text because the agreement with the vast majority of the five thousand three hundred Greek manuscripts in existence it, it correlates with. So it's also called the majority text, traditional text, Antiochian text. Did you know that the Bible says that the disciples were called Christians first in Antioch? And this is where these texts were spread out from, from Europe and on. Syrian texts, by uh, the Byzantine text type, ecclesiastical text, Constantinopolitan text. Yeah. Traditional text through the ages. Well, you have the Valdensians, Peshitta version, Italic Bible. Gaelic Bible, Gothic Bible, Old Syriac Bible, Armenian Bible, Palestinian Syriac, French Bible of Oliviton, and so on. And all of these Bibles correlates in agreement in a roughly and vast majority with the traditional text. So this is where you can trace this Bible throughout the ages. It has always been there. Yeah. 99% of all New Testament manuscripts, 85% of papyri, uh, and so on, are uh, representative of the traditional text. 
normal Bible. Why twist it? Why change it? But then things suddenly changed. The critical text came into existence. So, in 1844, Codus Sinaiticus, Aleph, was found in Egypt, in Sinai, dated around 330 to 360. And since this, unfortunately, was one of the more older manuscripts we had, uh, then they suddenly decided, let's throw away the, th the thousands of manuscripts we have, and let's just keep one. Even though this one deviates from this majority of manuscripts. Where is the logic in that? Did you know the, f the, the Bible has something called a rule of first mention? The first time Sinai, where this text was found, uh, it, the Bible says that uh, the first time Sinai is mentioned is actually when some people wants to try and argue with Paul. So already there you have the deception, na deceptive nature of Sinai. And then uh, Cultus Vaticanus B was found. It was dated 300 to 325, and that has, well, it's all we know about it, that it has been in the Vatican Library since 1475. And the Vatican has an, has an entire, they had an entire team of forgers, where they used to forge uh, scriptures and texts to, to manipulate uh, people and so on. So we don't know how, old, uh, when it was found. But it was in 1844 that the the, the first uh, critical text was found in Egypt, and do some investigation around that. I was highly suspect uh, that Tischendorf guy, and also the history around that stuff, how he accidentally found this in a tra garbage bin about to be burned, led by the Vatican somehow, you know. So the, the the entire background of both these uh, crack, uh, texts is just really weak, and for some reason those two manuscripts uh, plus some other they are going they are the, the critical text they somehow just trash away the entire body of evidence of thousands of manuscripts called the traditional text, which ninety percent they agree with each other. This is the strongest uh, uh, case you have in in history. You know, you find three books and then use those manuscripts together, and then you have a strong uh, cop. You have a strong uh, textual history uh, of of that book, and you can uh, make uh, claim that book to be valid. But here we have thousands. So yeah. Anyways. In 1881, some years later, two guys who, Westcott and Hort, two sp suspect guys who worshipped Mary, uh, it seemed, they in 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 secret they uh, they um, they used these manuscripts, or the the found by Tischendorf, uh, to release their Greek New Testament. And this strongly uh, prioritized Sinaiticus, Maleticanus, over the thousands upon thousands of sources. And there's just probably, you know, then suddenly Bible verses started to get into question. And 2018, this Nestlé Aland, Westcott and Hort manuscript, is for some reason stating to be the most reliable text because of the two allegedly older sources. Let's have two books. You have a proper Bible and a Mormon book, both uh, came from the year 2000 and then 100 years later which one is worn out the bible because you read the bible the book of mormon is put on the shelf because it's a fake bible it doesn't make any more valid the hebrew has actually burned uh, manuscripts they had a rule for that and uh, plus so i take it from that from uh, from the city of uh, in Antioch, they spread out, and that's where you have the body of evidence coming from. Two sources, one from Antioch and one from Egypt. And, uh, yeah, unfortunately, they're, they're not so old as the one in 330, but there's so many thousands of them. And I think it's not many years uh, newer they are. So it's uh, actually not very logical to use the critical text as, uh, as a base for your Bible. So, yeah. 
The thousands of witnesses were replaced with a few, and people followed blindly along and made pop many popular Bibles out of these reliable manuscripts. For instance, I have a Bible in Norway here from 15, um, year 1500s. And if I check out Luke 4.4, 4, it says, Man doesn't live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. But if I check out the modern 2011 Bible here in Norway, it, it says, Man don't live by bread alone. Stop. And then underneath it says, Yeah, some newer manuscripts added those verses making you question this stuff. What's going on here? What are the Bible publishers doing? Yeah, that's what I'm taking into question here. And actually, Tischendorf, he did a bad thing. He kind of ruined the, the Reformation. Yeah. So, here are some select verses that's quite critical that proves actually that if you have a timeline here, from here's the cross, and here's the earliest manuscripts, the, the critical text, the, the, the Sinaiticus, and then you have some uh, some of the other, the more, um, then we have the traditional, the normal ones, many of them, but this is the oldest apparently. So they say that all the manuscripts added this stuff, but my point is, you have f other good sources that quote from these verses. They quote from the traditional text which proves actually it's supposed to be there. So yeah. Colossians 1 King James In whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins. INIV says, in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. And then he had probably has a question mark that says other uh, some later manuscripts added the words through his blood. So it makes you question, ah, did God really say this or not? Yeah. Well, Irenaeus, that's John's spiritual grandson. Irene, uh, John, okay, Jesus discipled John, John discipled Polycarp, Polycarp discipled Irenaeus, and Irenaeus actually heard John. So he was actually present with John. And he said this, 200 years um, before the earliest manuscripts, which proves that the earliest manuscript is not the proper one. He says, By whom? By his own blood he redeemed us, as also his apostle declares, in whom we have redemption through his blood, even the remission of sins. So yeah, Irenaeus, John's spiritual grandson, quoted from the traditional text. Supposedly, those sentence was added hundreds of years later as a forgery. Uh-uh. Yeah, you can find that in the Against Heresies, Book 5, Chapter 2, anti nicene Fathers, Volume 1. That's online. I'll, I'll link it down below. So yeah. Acts 8. And Philip said, If thou believest with all thine heart, thou mayst. And he said, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. And the critical text actually removes that whole sentence, that whole verse. And that's really good for those uh, reformed guys that uh, that baptize babies and think that they're saved. You know, because this is actually one of the verses for, um, supporting the believer's baptism. Irenaeus, he quoted from this. Philip declared that this was Jesus and that the scripture was fulfilled in him as did also the believing eunuch himself, and immediately requested him to be baptized, he said, I believe Jesus Christ to be the Son of God. That's found in verse 37. He quoted from 37. Cyprian, he did the same. In the Acts of the Apostles, Lo, here is water. What is there which hinders me from being baptized? Then said Philip, If thou believest with all thine heart, thou mayest. See that? This is hundreds of years before the earliest supposedly manuscript the Sinaiticus which everybody is saying this is the proper one just because it's old so the one is just removing those thousands of manuscripts the, the, the one is outweighing the witness of the thousands of manuscripts where is the logic Who's this is why I'm standing on the rooftop shouting so yeah Matthew 5 
I say to you that whosoever is angry with his brother without a cause shall be danger of the judgment. See that? But in your modern Bible it says, I tell you that anyone who is angry with his brother will be subject to judgment. What is going on? Doesn't that leave you con condemnated? Irenaeus, he said, and, and he that is angry with his brother without a cause shall be danger of the judgment. All this is declared that if you know that she'll come to God. See, he quoted from this verse, which was not added hundreds of years later. This is supposed to be there. Cyprian, he says the same, that everyone who is angry with his brother without a cause shall be, shall be guilty of the judgment. The truth always sets you free, my brother. So yeah. Mark 2, 17 and Matthew 9, 13. I came not to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. Critical text says, I have not come to call the righteous, but sinners. Yeah, Jesus come to call sinners. <laughs> no, to repentance. Justin Martyr said, his words being, I came not to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. And just for you to reckon, all of these sources are uh, hundreds of years before the the dating of Sinaiticus, which was 330 or 360. And another place it says, and if it is the flesh that is a sinner, then on its account alone did the Savior come, as he says, I did not come to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. Yeah. Barnabas, he came not to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. See that? Mark 2, again, it says, Irenaeus, says the same thing, I came not to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. There is no good or better uh, uh, source than Irenaeus uh, and Polycarp, those guys. So, But uh, according to modern scholarship and Bible uh, textual criticism, Irenaeus was reading from a fake Bible. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. Tatian says the same thing, sinister repentance. And in the first line here, it says traditional text. And it says KJV and Guds Ord. In Norway, we have the Bible called Bibelen Guds Ord, which is the only proper Bible in Norway. Uh, this is the only one which is based wholly upon the traditional text. You have this uh, 2011 thingy, which is producing doubt. See the fruit of the Bible. Which one is producing uh, belief and faith and fruit? And which one is creating doubt? And which one is, uh, is mi mixing up the Bible uh, verse uh, and removing lines and everything? Yeah, and no man hath ascended up to heaven, but he that came down from heaven, even the Son of Man, which is in heaven. See that? That's a verse that proves Jesus' deity. He was both divine and human and he was omnipresent in his divinity also as he was on earth he was in heaven critical text says no one has ever gone into heaven except the one who's in heaven the son of man and then they remove the last line and then they say yeah more reliable manuscripts they don't have this or <laughs> some some uh, newer manuscripts they added the lines which is in heaven making you doubt the omnipresence of jesus so Hippolytus, he quoted from the thing, the traditional text is, Son of Man, which is in heaven. Tatian did the same thing, which is in heaven. Second Timothy 2.15, Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needed not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. That's quite a good verse, actually. It teaches you how to Rightly divide what's for you, what's not for you. Uh, dispensationalism, I highly recommend the study of that. Not the hyper, not the insane, not the cra crazy one, but there are some really strong truths in that. There are many dogmatic theologies out there, and the only one that seems to be valid is dispensationalism. Here it says, correctly handles. Clement, disciple of Peter, actually, he said, 
such workmen shall skillfully dispense the word of truth. Workmen who should not be ashamed. Dispense and dispensationalism. The, and also the didact, it says, rightly divining the doctrines of the Lord. Uh, more examples. Oregon says, and I don't really. There's many weird theologies out there. Oregon, he he uh, is actually well. It seems to be one of the guys responsible for the spiritualization of the Bible, which threw the body of Christ into a dark age. So yeah, I'm not I'm not endorsing these guys, not at all. But I'm just saying that they're quoting from when they're quoting from a Bible. It seems to be the traditional text. Yeah, uh, rightly dividing the word of truth. John three, no man. Yeah, I already did that, did I? And oh, okay, here's another source. Novation, he says, which is in heaven. Mark fourteen. Yeah, this is the blood of the new covenant, which is said for many remission, for many, for the remission of sins. It says the covenant. This is actually quite important when you're studying the covenants. Uh, yeah, you would like to know that it's talking about the new covenant because they're all fulfilled in the new covenant, the Davidic and 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 uh, these other ones, yeah. Adamic, uh, Abrahamic and uh, land, Palestinian and everything. Cyprian says drink all this, this is the blood of the New Testament. See that? When you're having taking uh, the cup you're taking part of the New Covenant. And also Tatian says this is about the New Covenant. My point is simply they've removed the, words, the, the word New. They just say it's the Covenant but it's the New Covenant. And also you have Paul actually quoting from this, should be quite important, he says. In the same way he said, this cup is a new covenant in my blood. So yeah. The blood of this just person. This man's blood, they removed that. So, you know, Jesus was sinless, that's quite important. I am innocent of this innocent man. Sorry, I went too fast. Yeah. This just person, this innocent man. Luke 2. Joseph and his mother marveled at those things which were spoken of him. Here it says the child's father. That's wrong. Because Jesus was born of a virgin. His father was father in heaven. Joseph was the husband of Mary. He was not the father of Jesus. That's also something Satan is twisting these days. Tatian said the same thing. Joseph and his mother. Yeah. Mark 1. The beginning of the gospel of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, as it is written in the prophets. Behold, I send my messenger before thy face, which shall prepare thy way. In the prophets. The critical text messes this up and makes actually wrong. The beginning of the goodness about Jesus, Messiah, the Son of God. As it is written in Isaiah the prophet, but it's not written in Isaiah. It's uh, in Malachi, I believe. Anyways, so Irenaeus, he quotes from the proper Bible. If you're questioning which one is correct, well, Irenaeus, he said, Wherefore also Mark, the interpreter and follower of Peter, does thus commence his gospel narrative, the beginning of the gospel of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. As it is written in the prophets, behold, I send my messenger before thy face, which shall prepare thy way. Yeah. Good guy, Irenaeus. First John, every spirit that confesses not that Jesus is come in the flesh is not of God, and this is the spirit of Antichrist. That's like the whole purpose of the of the of the of the, um, the letter against Gnosticism, among other things. And modern scholarship, they think, yeah, this is really good. Let's remove the 5,300 manuscripts and just remove that thing and just uh, keep whatever that one old uh, manuscript's uh, saying. It's just insane. Every spirit that does not acknowledge Jesus is not from God. Uh-huh. Polycarp says, and that's the disciple of John. 
You don't get a better witness than this. Whosoever does not confess that, I mean, a witness as a textual witness. Whosoever does not confess that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is Antichrist. See that? Has come in the flesh. To Trillian, same thing. Deny that Jesus was come in the flesh. That's the point. So yeah, good job on modern scholarship. Again, Tertullian, surely he's Antichrist who's denied that Christ has come in the flesh. He is Antichrist that is taught is both in ancient and new prophecies, especially and especially by the Apostle John, who says that already men many false prophets are gone out in the world, the foreigners of Antichrist who deny that Christ has come in the flesh, who don't acknowledge Jesus. To be the Christ meaning God the Creator. Yeah. First John five seven. The Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost, and these three are one. One of the strongest Bible verses on the Trinity, among others. This is highly debated. The critical text just removed this thing. How nice. Cyprian. He who breaks the peace and the concord of Christ does so in opposition to Christ. He who gathered elsewhere than in the church scattered the church of Christ. The Lord says, I and the Father are one. And again it is written of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. And these three are one. He is quoting from 1 John 5, 7. Cyprian. The Lord says, I and the Father are one. And again, it is written of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. And these three are one. And I believe you only find that sentence one place. These three are one. Or two. But it's this is one correlating to the Trinity. Yeah. Revelation. He causes all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads. Here comes along the, the critical text and change this thing. Make sure you take the marker of the beast. Is that what they want? It is also forced all people, great and small, rich and poor, free and slave, to receive a mark on their right hands or on their foreheads. Well, Hippolytus says mark in. Tatian says that you should have a mark in. This is hundreds of years before. So which one is true? Yeah. So, I think uh, this uh, quotation from this guy who worked with this for a long time settles this debate, actually. I am utterly disinclined to believe, as grossly improbable does it seem, that, the, that at the end of 1800 years, 995 copies out of every thousand, suppose, will prove untrustworthy. That's the consequence of the critical text. And... Or, or the rationality of those endorsing the critical text. And that the one, two, three, four, five which remain those contents were till yesterday as good as unknown will be found to have retained the secret of what the Holy Spirit originally respired. Me too. I am utterly unable to believe in short that God's promises has so entirely failed that at the end of 1800 years much of the text of the gospel had in point of fact to be picked up by a German critic out of a waste paper basket in the convent of St. Catherine. If you are against every point of this, there's probably not much I can do to you. But for the others who are actually open for the Holy Spirit, this will be good for you. Um... What then have you to suppose to the evidence of living men, O sellers, defender of the pseudo Sinaitic Codex? If you are still incredulous, I say to you, remain faithful in your faithlessness. I have proclaimed the truth, for I will answer as I, have, as I should to the all-seeing God in the day of judgment. Therefore I have spoken, I have no sin, holy or Simon it is. He was actually trying to wake up people regarding the direction they were taking, regarding the critical text. So yeah, you need to know what you... So in in the US, unfortunately, it's the King James Version, which is actually based on the traditional text. Uh, the Textus Receptus. But there are some easy reader version, the Sword Bible, King James easy reader version you can read. In Norway, we have Bibelen Guds Ord. 
And I believe in many countries in the world there are Bibles based upon, as they were for all time, except f from 1881, uh, on the Textus and Septus Bible. So yeah, um, in Norway we had a proper Bible up until 1881, and after that we had the the the, the sourdough or the the stuff from the critical text into our Bibles, living doubt and everything. But in 1997, uh, this guy from Hermon Forlag, he brought Bibelen Gudsår into Norway. That was a great deed for the body of Christ in Norway. And actually in 2017, he revised it. And yeah, so we were quite lucky in Norway. So yeah. So God bless. And uh, you should see some of the videos regarding... Um, around the Reformation, what actually happened. People was burned for getting a proper Bible. So what the Holy Spirit did around the Reformation was quite good actually. And the completion of the Reformation was uh, of course when dispensationalism come, came, when the proper, hermen proper hermeneutic around principle around the whole Bible. So yeah, this is my contribution. This is, uh, it took a long time to make this stuff, to do some research actually over a year or more. And for all the research I've done, actually, it's like three, four, five years. So, yeah, it should. Uh, there's thousands and thousands of differences on the critical and the traditional text. Do yourself a favor. Get yourself a traditional text Bible. God has kept his word throughout the all ages. The critical text is not the one that God intended. So, yeah, thank you. God bless.